know, obviously that's a best or worst case scenario, depending on what side of the fence you're on, but obviously they're not going to get 100% participation. So if you look at this green area, that's, that's hypothetically if everybody signed up. So obviously that's not going to happen. So really these green areas are probably more pretty likely going to be even further shrunk. So uh, sorry I missed that point. I guess one other thing, uh, a couple of our committee members had an opportunity to travel up to Peel City this past week and kind of visit with the community up there. Uh, Dale and Ken Cool were up there and uh, I don't know if you guys had anything you wanted to share or learned anything to help the rest of us here. Well, after going up to Peel and having been up near Carson City several months ago, um, the need for these maps became really, really apparent to get an idea of what a visual is. Um, and by being both of those places, and especially at Beale, I can count a lot more than a dozen, um, a dozen turbines, because they had them packed in pretty close to the area that they were in, and there are some pretty sizable green areas here that would take, from what I saw up there, several. Now having said that, at the same time, and from knocking on doors, going into on people's property, talking to people outside, um, and, and people that were non, well, non participating, those we saw in businesses, um, and then uh, just residential people that didn't have any turbines. We talked to people that had turbines, some that didn't, uh, but were right around them. It was kind of funny about how they reacted, you know, when asked about those. And mostly they would right away say, no, oh, they're fine, we get used to them, it's no big deal. But then they would shortly say, but, well, there is the noise. <laughs> and then it was like, it really doesn't bother us that much. And it's only the noise from the blade itself. So I found that, you know, they, there is a difference. They notice it. They notice those turbines. Uh, but they just don't. I didn't find anybody really that they bothered that they were around. Um, it's not impacting wildlife. So um, for me, when I look at this stuff, you know, I see the need for this to allow turbines. Um, but to take into the account, I mean, we got property owner rights, and that's important. There's an economy here that'll bring money into this you know, in the community, uh, and that's always a good thing. And you, whoever gets it, it ends up trickling through the, the community. Um, so we have that. On the other hand, the, to me, the big negative impact, and I think it's what most people did, is the change in the horizon. And so when we talk about uh, the height of these, you know, you have higher limitation on height, you have less of them, but you see them more. You have, drop it down, you don't see them from afar. So I don't know what the trade-off is on that. Um, but yeah, I, I can count at least 20 on this map of 676 feet tip height. Um, I could see some areas where they put three or four, I think, at least. I, I was amazed at how close they put them together, how, how much it looked packed in. They look close together from them up there up there, but you know, they're on the same foot. Don't they still have to have that setback from the property or the house? Yeah, but I don't know what they do from each other. That was one of my questions, is how close can they build them to each other? Right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that's the answer to that is. But I know they have to 
to avoid, you know, have those setbacks the same. Oh yeah, from again. from roads and you know. houses and everything. Yeah. And I can't believe they build them close enough that one's falling over, it will hit the other one. No, but there are <laughs> setbacks to roads on some um, some ordinances that are fairly the tip height. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure they're doing that to each other on the turbines. So yeah, I used I see some big squares there getting to several, and that's you know good for them. But um, and then the other thing that I see this map reveals to me is all those non-participating participating parcels, uh, the red ones with the dots. I mean they're automatically excluded from any benefit in this. In, to themselves, but they're right there. I mean, does, why does there, if I look at this map, they're putting dots on these, and they're, you know, this developer is saying this is who's non participating. They're excluding a lot of people from being able to, you know, from, you know, saying, hey, this is good. It should be for all of them. This is for you. And, you know, it is the same everywhere. The people that signed up, they never have anything bad to say about it. The ones that can't sign up, they say the worst things about it. And I've been kind of trying to push that all along, get more participating property owners. I think that's the best thing a developer could do. non-participating parcels here. I think that's more of a non-buildable. I think those residents are, they would be allowed to participate if they chose to. But okay. they wouldn't be able to, you know, small little the parcels, they wouldn't be able to build, put a place a turbine, but I think they would, I think everybody in, from what I... All right, well, you brought, you brought up another point that I wrote down that I want to bring up. All right, this is a map that Apex did. I like how it helps us visualize. Um, it's not a contract, and they have stated non-participating parcels. They didn't say non-buildable. It said non-participating in their legend. If you turn the page, Tim, this sheet right here, that shows the buildable area. Yep. The same thing there, but it's not like non-participating outside. That's just outside boundaries. So. Right, but they are on the front page. Right. Designating non-participating properties and the people that never got it. Mm -hmm. So you know, I I want us to be careful about putting too much store in this also and making sure that whatever we do, you know, we limit to where we don't take this like, hey, this is great, and then they go and run with something else. back from non-participating homes and not the property line that's I, to me that's as bad a, a method as it is to outright say no we aren't going to have any good money and those to me those are opposite of things Um, they're looking for setbacks from buildings, homes, dwellings. dwellings, okay, for, and that's great for participating properties. For non-participating properties, it should be from the property line. Mm -hmm. Invading the setback into into the property line of non-participating property is the same as, it's the same thing people are saying, you know, it's just the opposite argument about saying we shouldn't have any turbines. So you're saying, Tim, let me, I'm interpreting that, and what you're saying is that it 
shouldn't be 150 feet in one sentence and 200 in another. Or two times the height or one and a half times the height. It can be two times the height from a non-participating property line. And they can be, and, and I also said, I made the setback smaller from dwellings in a participating property if you want. They're, they're you know, opting into it. Right. They're putting their name on it. What do you think from a non-participating line when you say you can put it from a dwelling to a participating property line? Yeah. You couldn't even put a dwelling in there. We don't do anything else from a dwelling. Not except except your septic field or your tank inside your own property. Right. Or your well. <clears throat> yeah, so then if they wanted to build, uh, they could build on that section of the property. If they didn't want to be that close to the tree line, they could, that section of the property would not be used for tree line. I thought our proposed was 200 feet from your dwelling, 150 feet from the property. Two, it's two times from the dwelling, one and a half times from the property line. But what he's saying is that if they're not participating, you shouldn't even do it from the dwelling. It should just be right from the property line. I think for the, the benefit of the planning commission, if you go to the, the draft ordinance that we have been working off of, let's see what document number that is, document five, page eight. So they are, we are, um, at least this draft is measuring setbacks from uh, property lines and non-participating parcels. It goes up four in the top, um, in the very top. And it's been, it's my experience that that is, that is common throughout ordinances in, in Michigan to govern for these types of uses. I think there are some, um, the way that some other ordinances that you may see in, in other counties is they will have that and how this draft is set up, they'll have uh, a setback from non-participating lot or property line, as well as um, a setback from an occupied dwelling, essentially. And if you go to page seven on uh, number one, it talks about that. And I think that's the belt and suspenders approach. So I think there theoretically, um, there, there could be some possibility where you're, you're just distance away from a non-participating property line, but then you're still close to a occupied building, which um, in many of these ordinances that they're, they're trying to prevent um, at least occupied building provision from, for generally it's safety, but at, at the same time, the, the setbacks also play a role in how much shadow flicker and noise they generate on a, on a property or a building. I don't understand what you just said. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's, I'll talk. I know I can be very confusing. So on, on page eight, the 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 way this draft ordinance is set back set up right now, it's set up to make setbacks based on non-participating property lines. So if you go to page eight, the top of four boundaries with non-participating lots, wind turbines should not be. Uh, 1.5 times hub height, which we agreed to switch that to tip height, uh, but that's pending a change of a property line of a non-participating lot. So I just wanted to give the, the planning commission some, I know we're talking through the issue, but I also wanted a, a gentle reminder of what, you know, what is, uh, what is in, the, in the draft we're considering. Okay. And then at the same time, uh, I'll add another note is, I think these maps do provide a good visual reference. Um, at the same time, you should be considering, and I know this is very difficult because there's been one project and one developer who's come to the, to the township of, you know, we want to set standards that would be appropriate for any developer. Um, so I think these are very good examples, but they, they you, should, you should base it on, you know, not necessarily, you know, you should base it on the needs of the community, uh, which, which can be reflected in just, just keep that in mind that we, we should think about it in, in a way that is um, um, for any developer.
Yeah, so the draft ordinance we have right now is one and a half times from the property line of a non participation. Yes. But it's 200 from a dwelling. Two times. Two times. Yes. And I'm saying it should be two times from a non participating property. I agree with that. I guess my only concern would be if you had a house on, let's say it's 20 acres or a 40, you know, and then the next neighbor down the road's got another 80 or a 40, you know, if you change that distance, I mean, does it need to be, I mean, obviously you're gonna have various sized lots with dwellings, you know, property line could be, you know, if it's a two acre, lot with a house obviously there isn't a Our large property. difference there but if you own 20 acres there's quite a distance whether that'd be necessary to, to have that extra you know, half a time multiplier there well to me that's where you'd need it even more because um, just like Dave brought up about a building you know the space in front of a house that's set way back in the road we can't use it because we restricted the building of a extra building, if you, somebody with 20 acres, well, they've got the room to split it and build another house. And you, if this goes through with one and a half times the setback from the dwelling of that 20 acre property, property <coughs> you've eliminated exactly. 500 feet of buildable area that you may have. So, so that's actually a really good point because, and something that we actually run into a lot. So I think it's a good point from a planning perspective to, to think about it that way, but at, in, in, in reality, someone would still be able to build within that, that setback um, because this, these standards only apply to someone citing this particular land use. So they would, if they're, if they're building a home, for example, they would be able to, to do that within it, which is, it's, it's, it's something to think about, but I just wanted to clarify that. So you're saying you set the, you do the setback at 150, or one and a half times setback from non-participating, you know, from a property line, yep. and you got a non-participating one, you didn't want to do that, and so if he sells, you know, if he wants to build another house in the area, he can do it what within one time. Of you the, would generally be be res, re, I should say restricted by what the zoning yes. ordinance says uh, is in the. I'm not saying this is right or wrong either way, but you'd be you'd be restricted what the zoning ordinance says the setback requirements are for a single family dwelling. Right, so you can put it underneath the, the home. Not if, that if that, would, to, not that, that would make it yes. desirable. Yes. <laughs> so I. The, the, I think the point still, your point is absolutely correct, but I just wanted to, to clarify, you know, this is, you know, this applies from the turbine or siting versus the, the reverse. You're generally not going to apply these standards in the reverse. But if you have 20 acres, you know, one and a half times from the property line of that existing 20 acres all the way around. Right, and he divides it in half, and you buy 10 acres, and I buy 10 acres. Our property lines are still going to be one and a half times from any turbine. So I don't see how that makes any difference. Oh, we have to. So part of the part of the public comment process, I think, you know, I don't know if the chair wants to. One and a half times from the property line, so it can't get any closer. Okay, so even if you divide that property in half, it's still one and a half times. You can't make it closer because you divide the property in half. Right. Oh, no, the, idea is be two, it be the idea is to be two times from the distance of a dwelling. And if you put a dwelling close to that property line, inside that additional 500 feet, or that additional half time, which in the case of a you know, 600 foot pit pipe, So it's still one and a half times away, right. but for a desirable distance for the dwelling from a turbine, it's two times. Well, he's saying it's a dwelling distance. Mm -hmm. So 
someone couldn't build a house closer to this thing. Yeah, so it would be less than two. It would be less than two times. That's right. Which makes it less desirable. That will affect property value. Yeah. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I was with Ken that day. We really had a good day. It was a good, bright day. We went up several, drove back several trails, roads to the different turbines, shut off, listened to them, looked around. Uh, we paid attention to the, the shadows. Yeah, we definitely passed the shadows. They were spinning pretty good that day. Uh, and we talked to several people, and we talked about shadows. Different ones talked about that certain turbine at a certain time, you give them just a little bit on a, in the early morning, late in the afternoon, something like that. And one person even talked to us about uh, a neighbor, a hearsay, okay, that they had one that they were having a little trouble with, and, when, and the uh, company shuts it off. Now, we did go to uh, other different places. We just didn't go there. We went to the vet clinic. But there, I've heard a lot of stories about horses aboard and cows won't milk. So, you know, far fetched stories. We went to the vet clinic. The people there looked at us like <laughs> they did not know what we were talking about. They said, Dr. Cole, we probably not know about that. But anyway, um, we went to the bank. No oppositions anywhere that they thought. I don't have no, nobody really objections. The objections that we heard quite a little is that you kind of got to get used to seeing them. But you do get used to it after a while. Uh, we talked to a school board member. Now, he was very information. And a lot of these people we talked to said, we take our name and address, we get the name like call it. Call it. Call it. School board member from Beale City Schools said that that just more than doubled their SAD. Just the, the turbine segment. He said that took their last bond proposal and will cut it in two in years. So uh, that's just some of the stuff that we, uh, that I picked up anyway, and I'm close to Greg. Ken, how you guys? Um, well, Nobody said anything bad about Apex and the Belfry. Is in fact, they said they were pretty good. Now we did say <laughs> their subcontractor showed up, but yeah, that's, 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 that's for the Apex, property owners. Apex had to come through and clean up behind some of their. Oh, I don't even remember what the names of the, of the subcontractors yeah, the company were. Uh, right now we can do that. Um, one thing, one person brought up that uh, they're in the middle of them turbines, and he said he had a. A TV antenna, a big stationary antenna, and he said it monkeyed up his reception at certain places. Uh, Apex, which was the builder at that time, came in and put them in a, a new antenna. I said, I'm not a TV man. They put him in a new antenna with a rotor, and that rotor took care of that problem. Except you have to turn the rotor. And he also stated that just down the road, there was non-participating property owners, I don't know, like acres, two acres, whatever it was, and they had problems with too. Non-participating, and Apex put them in a, a new antenna system. I was kind of surprised to hear that. I didn't hear it direct, but I heard it through you. Um, and one person, I don't remember which one brought it up, about the lighting. And when this was proposed up there, I, I'd say it was close to three years ago when the layout was put in and, and set out that this aircraft detection thing was really new. They didn't have anybody to go on or anything, so they kind of decided against it. Uh, they wish they had done it now. Uh, in case you don't know what that is, that's a... Uh, only turns the lights on if there's aircraft within a couple miles or whatever. I, I don't know what the distance is to come on. Or else if there's no aircraft in the area, they're not on. Um, that's just 
a few of the things that, that I took away, and there was quite a lot. We let people talk. We didn't do the talking. They did the talking. And I thought that was really good. Well, thanks for you guys to take that trip. Sounds like it was a great time. I guess a question for you, Kyle, on to do an overlay district. I mean, do you necessarily go by roads or distances? I mean, you can draw it however you want, or I guess what are the guidelines as far as if we were to implement an overlay system? If you were if you were to implement an overlay system, you could do it any way you wanted. You would just break the township into an area where you could have areas or area where you could build this land use, the turbines, and then areas where you could not. So you could do it by sections, you could do it by roads, so you know, done both ways. The other way that um, the draft before you does it is you can also do it by individual setbacks from, this is an overlay, but individual setbacks from non-participating lots, um, habitable structures uh, in your township, likely lakes, um, and, and so forth. So those are the two ways you can do it. But if you're doing overlay, it's basically an open canvas. You have an open map for your township, and you draw where you can have uh, this, this land use and where you can't have it. Um, Chris? Yep. Looking at the overlay, Our township does lay a little bit like the one did up there to Beale City, I can't remember the name of the township. Just west of Beale City, I, two miles was it where the lake was, yeah. if that. <clears throat> that was the issue, we did drive around that lake and those turbines on the east side aren't that far away from the lake. I don't know, we could have measured out to half, three quarters of a mile, maybe that. Um, but when you drive around on the west side of that lake and look across, and I realize most people have that lake property, they want to fish, you know, they don't want to do that. That with our overlay here, the only thing I see on that is, is it, it looks like it, it's impossible to go like a half mile more to the east on that overlay from Indian Lake. Actually, with our look out here or possible building sites, that there really is not going to affect that too much. And if you looks like to me, if you went another half mile, and then they have to put their setbacks in, or what our setbacks will be from there, that would that would take it away from the lake a lot. I ain't saying it would disappear. Well, I assume you're kind of looking at east of Bailey Road there, almost to Anvil Road. I mean, there's a lot of rural residential in there. Well, that's a, that's, that'd be a, that's a mile left there. I'm talking about at least going to another half mile there. Right. <laughs> Which would make it more like the rest of the rural the north. Right. Yeah, the east portion is a little bit thinner. Nothing's really going to be built until Amber Road, according to this. I mean, so they're actually getting a whole nother mile. Right. Basically, half our township is not going to get anything, so why make a bigger overlay when you're not going to get it? You've got too many food houses. I mean, I think you're adding more to what you don't need to. In this map, you may not be 100% accurate. Either. No, it's strictly but, hypothetical. And that's a lot, I mean, you do have a lot of rural residential right in there. They do. I mean, it's going And I think that's why they're meaning non participating. It's under 20 acres, which won't be buildable. Already, probably, and we, we don't know if 
quite a few less because it's not our accounts there. Right, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it might not be, we, we can't determine whether it's in the west. But I guess I wouldn't, it seems to me like Bailey, Bailey Road is a good divider and it's straight, it's straight and it's, it's a good rectangle <coughs> for people from Indian Lakes to look at this and say, hey, this is, this is the, the deadline right here, Bailey Road. Uh, and the other, if there is too many residential, they're never going to put there anyway. And that kind of gets back to the, not needing all the extra ice if, if you have a good setback of one and a half times or whatever you end up with. <laughs> but it is not, it's a thought. One of the questions that popped into my mind is what about community growth as far as once the power goes? I mean, are we limiting ourselves? Do we have to be careful of that? building them or what was building them, don't know that, they didn't see that. Didn't see a whole bunch of houses for sale, didn't see anything, that's all. Well, that whole area around Roseville, for example, I started getting them to build a subdivision right there. We didn't go clear that far. We didn't go that far east. There's a big subdivision there in Rosebush that has a lot of, I mean, I'm sure they got to stay at the top of that back. But well, that's what I'm wondering about, is it property setback? Setbacks are such that it's not going to allow for community growth. I mean, I think we need to be careful of that. How do you find that number? Yeah. I mean, it's very difficult. Yeah. 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 If we go two times from a road and one and a half from a dwelling, then that gives them an extra, you know, however many feet. So when you talk about setbacks or height, you mentioned from a road. Um, now when they ask this for the Met towers to be built from a road, they were 